Thank you guys so much for being here today. I am so excited. Sarah, thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to be here with you today, Misty. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do over at One Big Happy? Sure. Um, so I run everything behind the scenes at One Big Happy. I have the pleasure of working with Jenny Fish uh, on all of our knit patterns and knit tutorials, and I step in once in a while and help out with crochet. Um, I've been working in the yarn industry for about two decades. I have a couple of books and a couple of hundred patterns, so crochet really lives under my skin, and I like to explore different materials and, uh, and just have fun with it. Yeah, so Sarah reached out to me and had this idea, and I thought it was a perfect collaboration. I know so many of us who are quilters also work with yarn, and this is a great way to use those skills that we have when we cross over, but also work through our stash, because we're gonna use a jelly roll today to make this awesome rug. And the one that we've used in this sample here is Welcome Home by Anna Maria Horner for Free Spirit. It's such a beautiful, bright line. Um, I just really love it. It's, it's so uh, happy. The, the fabric in this jelly roll is gorgeous. Like every piece that I pulled out, I was like, I want more of this Right? One. I want That's more how of I this feel one. every time I see Anna Maria's lines. They're just so gorgeous. And, um, you know, maybe we'll get you into quilting before you know it, because it's, know. it's the fabric that draws you in. <laughs> so that's, yeah. That is so perfect. And so um, we also have two different methods. Sarah's going to show you um, two options of how to use your jelly roll. One is to have a half inch uh, bias tape maker. So if you have that lying around or you want to grab one, that's a great option. But um, Sarah, do you want to just dive into getting started with this? Sure. Um, so of course you're going to, you're going to open up your jelly roll yeah. and then take a look at all of those fabulous colors and then you kind of need to make a decision about how you're going to use those colors are you going to group them the way that they appear in the jelly roll or are you going to try and line them up color by color so i went with just how they came out of the jelly roll. okay i, I was really going to ask that, you um on this one but i have i have um another sample that i pulled that had um some kind of americana colors to okay. it and i really liked um I really liked the beiges and the greens that appeared in that, and I thought I could use sort of the rusty reds and the blues in another project. Okay, cool. So, so you split them up intentionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you can change the color order and mix it up. Um, this is a great way if you have, um, like I have, I have a friend that's a quilter, and so sometimes she has 90% of the fabric in a jelly roll that she loves, and the other 10% sort of sits off to the side. So this is a, another great way to bring together those scraps and stuff together. You, totally. You can I love piece those together into a, a colorway that you really like. Okay, awesome. So let's dive into it and okay. get started. Great. Um, so let me just get the actual rug out of here. Yeah. Uh, shall I open up the jelly roll? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Man, these fabrics are just beautiful. I know. I love them. It's like the happiest day. It really is. Um, lint brush was your friend. Was <laughs> was a lesson for me. I don't usually need a lint brush when I when I open up a skein of yarn, um, but that came in handy. I mean, just those colors are just so pretty, uh, and that just that arrangement was gorgeous. I loved it. I agree. So. And I think most of the fabrics in here, there are two strips. Okay. Some of them, there's only one, and that's okay. So, um, actually, why don't I turn this over to you for cutting, Miss? Okay, Steve. yeah, let's do um, it. And it, this is perfect. So there's two, so we can show both, both, uh, options. both cutting options. Okay. Yeah, so why don't I slide out of the way a little bit? Yep, totally. So one cutting option is to just cut it in half. Okay, and great. And the other is to cut it in thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this just because I, I'm totally comfortable cutting through four layers of fabric. And so since this is two and a half inches, we need one and a quarter inch strips, but I'm going to rotate this so that the, the marks on my ruler make more sense. So now we can just cut that in half like so. Perfect. And then this is the option we would use with the bias tape maker, yes. correct? Okay. Yep. So then we can set that aside. And then so on these, you cut it in thirds, right? You want to press that Oh, sure. And for me, just so we don't have any rumples when I go to cut it. Teamwork. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat it. Okay, great. Awesome. Nice. And same idea. Just going to make sure that's as straight as 
can be, the good news is this is pretty forgiving too. Yeah, so I'll tell you a secret. I don't have a rotary cutter at home, so I did this with scissors. Oh my goodness. So it's not perfectly straight lines. It doesn't have to be perfection, because once that it's is crooked, dedication. you never see those edges. So what uh, what measurement am I looking for on this? Math is hard. So, so this two and is a half two divided, and a half. Divided by three, is that? Uh, a little over three quarters? Yes, yes. Is that right? Yes. All right, I'm going for it. So this is where I also tell you that I eyeballed it with my scissors when yeah, I cut it in there. That makes sense. <laughs> so we're just gonna do that same thing. There's one. Because again, it doesn't have to be exact because this is all gonna be worked into those crochet stitches. So nobody's actually ever gonna see the width of your strips. I wonder if I need to trim a little bit off. You're saying it doesn't really matter. It's so close. Look at that. I just yeah. have the pinked edges hanging over. Yeah. All right, cool. So there's our second option. So one option is in thirds, one is in half. Right. And Sarah, you mentioned the benefit of doing it in thirds is you get extra yarn, essentially, yes. so you can make a bit bigger project. Yeah, so the great thing with the, um, the crochet rug pattern that we have at OBH is that it it doesn't specify a size. I mean, we give you a certain amount of yardage and tell you that it'll make a certain size, but you this pattern is great because you can just keep going with however much yarn yeah. or um, um, bias tape or, or fabric strips that you have. Okay. So um, the when we run it through the bias tape maker and then crochet with it, it makes a slightly sturdier fabric. So it would okay. be like a really great welcome mat or in a high traffic area. If you cut it into thirds, it's just a little bit thinner, but I mean, the cotton is so sturdy that it really won't make that much of a difference Pretty over time. Pretty forgiving. Yeah. Well, and I love these rugs because they remind me of my grandma's house. She had these crochet rugs all over her house and I just loved them. I can remember laying on the floor as a little girl looking at the different fabrics that made them up. And yeah. I think this is such a great way to bring that, you know, traditional historical style rug yeah. into the modern day by using fabrics that we love. So oh, yeah. super fun. Yeah, you can't beat these colors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's show them how to use this uh, bias tape maker. How about that? Let me open this up here. Let me grab one of the strips that you got there. Okay, if I can get into it, it's being difficult now. There we go. <laughs> There's that, and, and this is the half inch that we're working with. Yeah, so these are great. You just feed the fabric through. Actually, do you have a pin? Yeah, I do. I mean, I would think so. You would hope, right? Yeah, I don't Here know you why go. I'm trying to lead with my left hand on this when I'm right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> so the pin helps you to thread your fabric through. So I'm just folding my fabric in half to start, and then there's this great channel on the top of the bias tape maker where you can see the fabric coming through, and then what I like to do is wiggle it back and forth a bit to sort of open up the fabric inside the bias tape maker. So right now it's really, you can see it's heavy on one side and not quite as much on the other. So I'm going to adjust it. Yeah. You just go back and forth a couple of times until it seems to be centered in the bias tape maker. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but you get there. There's no rush on this, right? Like all of our projects are on our own time. Yeah, I say that often. Like I think we're so hard on ourselves when we're trying to do these projects and learn something new that we feel like it has to be in a certain amount of time, but it's really just about enjoying the process. And yeah. we don't have to set unreasonable expectations for ourselves, just enjoy it. Exactly, exactly. I In the, in the yarn world, we like to talk about being a project knitter, project crocheter, or process mm. knitter or crocheter, and I am a process I, crocheter. I think I'm a process quilter, too. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoy the process so much, it doesn't matter what the finished product yeah. is to me. All right, so then that pin that I used to thread it through the bias tape maker, I'm going to go ahead and pin the end of that bias tape to my board. Now, if you just have an ironing board at home, you can do this on your ironing board, too. Yeah, but absolutely. But these wool mats are so great. And then I'm going to pull the bias tape maker back a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see like the, the pink to edge is sort of poking out. And that's totally fine because, again, this is all, it's all going to be wrapped up in the stitches. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm just pulling the bias tape maker back along the fabric just ahead of the iron. 
It's so satisfying. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and sometimes the, so I've got a spot here where the fabric opened up. So it's really kind of easy to sort of hold that in place with your finger, catch it with the iron. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> and then you can just move it along. I mean, there's a lot of fabric right. in this jelly roll, so you're going to be doing this for a while. Yeah. So I set up in my living room, put on Netflix. Yeah, and just enjoy the process, watched right? Watched a movie or a show or two, yeah. And sometimes, all right, let me show you this. So my fabric has rolled over. And it's almost like it's making bias tape on the outside. So I'm going to slide back to where I was good. And then I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on that edge as I pull along. Make it behave. Yeah, that'll keep it on the inside. And, and if you, you have one of the like little project irons, that can be handy when you're working with something small like this as well. Because then it's oh, a yeah. little bit less bulky to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to mention sewing these all together. Oh, yeah. We got excited, didn't we? We did. We got a little ahead of ourselves. So <laughs> what, once you've got them all cut, you want to sew them all together. Before you start doing this. Yes. And that so then this process I found, so I have just a paper towel roll here. Uh -huh. And I cut all of my strips into thirds, and then I just sewed them end to end with a quarter inch seam. And I rolled them onto this paper towel tube just to kind of keep it all straight. So then when you're doing the bias tape, <clears throat> if you choose to do that, um, if you have a, a dowel or a barbecue mm -hmm. skewer or a knitting needle, you can poke it through the middle here, maybe into the sides of a basket, mm. so then this will roll for you. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah, and then, and then you'll have to roll it all back up once you've, once you've ironed it all. So let me see if I can get... Should I start sewing our narrower ones then together and then they'll be stitched together for the, the yeah. next demo? That would be great if you okay. do that. I will do that. I'm going to finish ironing out this little bias strip tape. Perfect. So I am just placing these right sides together with a straight quarter inch seam. I'll just pull this one around here. And I've got one more. And like Sarah said, you would just continue with your entire jelly roll. Oh yeah, it's a good chunk of time. But that's all right. There yep. we go. And that's it. I mean, that's a considerable amount of fabric yarn. Already. already. Yeah. And that's just From one strip. One strip, yep. exactly. All right, so this is where it gets fun for me. This is where we get to crochet. Um, and it's, it's really super simple. So what we're using is uh, an 11.5 millimeter hook. Okay. Um, this is one of the crystal lights from Susan Bates. It's a lot of fun. And then you're going to want some stitch markers. Okay. So for quilters, if this is a brand new thing for you, um, this is a knitter and a crocheter's friend. I just learned about these this past winter. Oh. I'm making a cowl. I say making because I'm still not done because then it got warm and I didn't want to make a cowl anymore, but I had to learn how to use stitch markers. So oh, yes. I was, and they're awesome. Oh, they're, they are lovely. And most of them come in multiple colors. Mm -hmm. So this pack we have yellow and we have purple and you want two colors because we want one to remind us where we start going around and then the rest are to remind us where the corners are okay and again in the in the cotton rug pattern from uh, one big happy all of that's detailed out in the pattern for you perfect um, so then we're gonna start with a slip stitch which is you create a loop around your fingers the tail goes behind and then you bring the tail up through that loop okay see that and then it sort of tightens up and you still have a loop let's show that one more time yep. So with the tail in your right hand, you're going to go all the way around your fingers so the tail goes behind, and then reach through that loop that you made and bring the tail through. Okay. Just like that. Okay? Awesome. Um, so you can do that with your strips that you were cut in thirds or the bias tape that you made. And you want to make sure that you leave about two to three inches of tail sticking out. Okay, and what is that for? 
the tail. Mm -hmm. The tail is just because um, if you make it a lot closer, then when you try and form that slip knot, the tail could pop out and now ah. you don't have a loop to put your hook on. Okay, so it's just some a little extra safety. Yes. I like it. Yeah. There we go, I'll make that one more time. All right, and so then this loop that we made with the slip knot just goes on your crochet hook. Okay. And then you can tighten it up a little bit, not too tight. You want this to be able to move around on your hook nice and easy. Okay. And then there's only two stitches that you need to know for this project. You need to know how to chain and you need to know how to do a single crochet. Okay. So let me show you the chain stitches because that's what we're going to start with. Your yarn is going to come up and over your hook from behind. And then as you pull on your crochet hook, you see the fabric strip catches in, that's called the throat of the crochet hook. Okay. And then you pull it through the loop that we made. And that leaves us with a new loop on our hook. I see it. That's so exciting. So we're going to do that again. So yarn up and over your hook, catch it in the throat, pull it through the loop that already exists. So that's a chain stitch. And with the bias tape, it doesn't really matter if it rolls over and you're seeing the underside of the bias tape or the top side of the bias tape um, because it's fabric on, you know, it's the, the right side of the fabric on both sides. Sure. So you're just going to chain, you're going to do this chain stitch 16 times. Okay. I'm just going to do one more and then I'm going to show you single crochet. There we go. And take your time with this. Cotton is not a very flexible fabric mm. on your hands and this isn't true bias tape but we ran it through the bias tape maker We're, we didn't cut the fabric on right. the bias so there isn't any give or take yeah so take your time with this project this is not a one day project it will hurt your hands if you try to do that um, so do a couple of rounds each day or do whatever feels comfortable for you that's a great tip yeah so now we can look back along this chain that we made and there's the loop on our hook and then there's a chain right before that one. Mm -hmm. We don't want to work into that because it'll just undo this loop that's on our hook. So we actually want to go to the second chain from our hook. Okay. And we're just going to go under the top half of it. Sometimes you have to wiggle your hook to get in there. And then we're going to come over the hook, catch it in the throat, and bring it through. And that puts two loops on our hook. Okay. And now we're going to do that again, yarn over our hook and pull through both of those. Okay. That has made one single crochet stitch. So a single crochet stitch has this strand at the top and then these two strands at the bottom. Okay. And now this is where the stitch markers come in handy. Okay. So we're going to take the one that's a different color and we're going to put it in that stitch that we just made. Okay. Now we're going to do a single crochet in every chain across the chain that we've made. So we're going to go into the next one just under the top half of it. So after that first one though, you just go to the next, the next one. You don't have to go twice. Nope. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really learning with you guys. I was telling Sarah earlier, I have tried to learn crochet and I can knit great. But so far, crochet has been evading me, and I am determined to get it this time. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time on it. Yes, we will. <laughs> so it's single crochet okay. all the way across. And um, on the One Big Happy YouTube channel, we have some stitch support videos. So if you need help practicing single crochet or just chain stitches, you can hop over there and watch those on our YouTube channel. And it's me, so you'll recognize my voice and my face. All right, so we only did one little bias strip. Uh, one little strip of bias tape here. So I've run out of it here. So what I'm going to do is actually switch over to um, the strips that we cut into thirds. Okay. And show you how to work with those two. So now you could go through and iron this in half all the way through. Um, but I found that to be more tedious than using the bias strip maker, the bias tape maker. Okay. So I just fold it in half as I go. Okay. So I just hold just a little bit at a time. Yeah, like four or six inches at a time, just enough to make the next stitch. Which makes sense because you're going to have it in your hand anyway. Yep. That, that's actually yep. really smart. If you're not dexterous enough to do that and, you know, there's lots of reasons why you wouldn't be, go ahead and iron the strip in half. Yeah. 
there's no, there's no saying that that's not helpful. Absolutely. The one thing you don't want to do is just work with this strip unfolded because it inevitably, I don't know what it is, physics, whatever, some magical <laughs> force in the world, it'll always flip itself over and the wrong side of the fabric will end up showing Okay. and you won't get all these gorgeous colors. And then we'll be sad. Yes, we'll be very <laughs> sad. So, all right, I'm just going to chain one more and then I'll show you that start again. Okay, so here's our chain. We don't want to use the loop on our hook and we don't want to use the chain before it. So we want to go under just the top half of that second chain from the hook. And we're going to single crochet. And then we're going to put our stitch marker in the top of that stitch. And then we're going to single crochet our way across this chain. So one single crochet in each stitch across. Ah, see, I didn't fold that one really mm. well, so the outside of the fabric is showing. That's all right. Yeah. You can just pull it out. Um, so so forgiving. Yeah, students that I've had for years will recognize this phrase from me. When in doubt, rip it out. <laughs> Don't be afraid of your mistakes. Um, the best things that I've learned about crafts, knitting, crochet, sewing, um, I don't quilt, but I do sew, um, is when you have to take something apart. Um, and it, it drives my husband crazy because I have made entire projects and gotten to the end and realized that this doesn't work and I've unwound all of the yarn and he just pulls his hair out and I, <laughs> and I say, you know, he's a, he's a woodworker and I say, if you could take all those nails out and undo all of those cuts and go back to the original wood that you had and start over, wouldn't that be such a gift? That is a gift of yarn, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Yeah to be able to reuse our materials. Okay, so now I'm at the last chain because okay. that's our slip stitch that we started with. And this is where Misty's question from earlier, do we put more than one in the same place, comes into play. Okay. So here in this last chain, we're actually gonna put three single crochets because that's gonna turn us around the end and then we're gonna ah, work down the other side. Okay. And this is where the other stitch markers come in handy. So we're gonna do one in here And then I'm going to put a stitch marker in that one. Okay. That's one corner. This is corner number two. So our first stitch marker is corner number one. This is corner number two. Got it. And this is another reason why we want a slightly long tail because this stitch is going to start to open up for us. Ah. And so you don't want a super short tail because it could pop out. Okay. Now we're going to do a second single crochet. This one is not going to get a stitch marker. This will become this side of the rug. Got it. Then we're going to do the third single crochet, which will also get a stitch marker. And I know this doesn't look very square right now, but it will. As you keep going. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then I like to tug that tail and sort of tighten up that base chain to close everything up a little bit. Yeah, this just looks like a very, very strange candy cane right now. But <laughs> <laughs> Have faith. Yes. Persevere. Trust. Yes. And so the other trick that I like to do is this little tail, I just sort of keep it underneath my thumb, and it'll hide inside the stitches that we make next. Okay. So now I'm going to go to where this single crochet went into the chain. Okay. And you should be able to see those little holes in the middle where those stitches went into. We're just gonna work our way back across the bottom of the chain into the same spaces. So th this is the start of those three stitches in the end. So we wanna go back to the next stitch. We're gonna go right into that same chain, but now we're working under the uh, over the bottom of it. Oh, and my fabric rolled again. So pop it out, make sure it's folded in half, and I can go back into that stitch. There we go. And complete our single crochet. Again, that, that tail is a little bit fiddly. You can just poke it out of the way and not worry about it. But if you just take your time with it, it will disappear inside your stitches. And again, it isn't yarn, it's fabric strips. So sometimes, sometimes it's gonna roll with the wrong side 
on the outside. Just take that stitch out, take your time with it. Or if it really frustrates you, just let it happen. I was gonna say. And straighten it out on the next stitch. That one little stitch is probably gonna be just fine in the long run. Yep, <laughs> yep. nobody will know. All right, so I'm just single crocheting in each stitch along the bottom of that chain. Yeah, see that one's sort of half rolled yeah. to the outside, but we're just gonna leave it. It looks great. Yep. All right, we have two more stitches. And there's one, and then we are back to where we started. Oh, we're gonna have just enough for this. This is perfect. <laughs> All right, so this is the chain where we worked that very first single crochet. Mm -hmm. We're going to work two single crochets into this one. The first one is going to get a stitch marker because it's our fourth corner. Okay. So let me put that in there. And then the second one will essentially become the fourth side of our rug. That other end side, right? Yep. So that is the end of round one. And it's starting to take shape. Like you can see the square shape is starting to form. Yeah, our tiny little rug. Our tiny little rug. <laughs> I love it. And from here, you're gonna work in a spiral. Okay. So sometimes in crochet patterns, when you're working in the round, you come back around to where you started and then you join and then you start another round separately. But we're actually gonna work in the round. It makes it, uh, we're gonna work spirally in the round. It makes it a lot easier. Okay. So we're back to this stitch with the stitch marker. I'm gonna take that out because it's kind of in the way. Okay. And then this is our corner stitch. And so for the rest of the rug, every time you come to a corner stitch with the stitch marker, you need to do three stitches. Okay. Just like we did at the end of the chain. Every time you come to a stitch marker, you need to do three single crochet stitches in that stitch. So we're gonna do one. And that's, that's how it's getting bigger, is by yes. adding those stitches on the corners. Yes, these are the increases I love that, that give you those nice, sharp 90 degree corners and enough stitches to go around them. Yeah. All right, so now we've got three stitches that we just made. One, two, three. I'm gonna take this stitch marker and put it in the middle one. Okay. So that they stay centered as we go around and around. Perfect. Let me show you that in the finished rug here. So now this one was made with the bias tape. Okay. And these are our corners. That looks so nice. Yeah, you almost can't see it. No, it's so smooth. It just lays beautifully. Yeah. And so because we're working in the spiral, you never really see a place where the new rounds start. And when you finish, you just keep going until you run out of fabric, and then we do a slip stitch, and I can, I can show you what that looks like. So okay. let me grab our other little sample here. Perfect. This is one that I've done with um, the strips that were cut in thirds, and then I just fold it in half as I crocheted. And I'm right at the end here, so let me take that back a bit. I mean, it's just, it's so cute, and it's so fun. I've, I really have enjoyed this project. Thank you for, um, Thank you for listening to my crazy and thinking oh, that no, it would be a good idea. Oh, no, it's not crazy at all. I was so excited when you reached out because it's something, like I said, I've wanted to work on crochet myself anyway. And so getting to spend time with you and, and also, you know, maybe use up some of the jelly rolls in my stash yeah. is really exciting. So I'm pretty excited about that. Awesome. So, all right. So I'm just going to show you how when you get to the end of your fabric, you finish it off. So... I did a stitch and now I have about four or five inches left. That's not enough to make another stitch. So I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then I'm going to bring that loop through the loop that's already on my hook. This is called a slip stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to fasten off. So I'm going to yarn over again. It's so short now. I'm going to pull the tail all the way through. Okay. And then tug that tail nice and tight. That locks that stitch in place. I see that, yeah. And now all I have to do is, and this is actually, I found easier done by hand. Okay. I just tuck the tail through stitches on the back side. 
in a couple of different directions. Just to kind of anchor it in there. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could stitch it in place. Mm -hmm. um, my machine at home would not be strong enough to go through all these layers, but you could hand tack it in place too. But I think this works great to just kind of weave it in and oh, yeah. then it I mean, if you, if you had a really big tapestry needle, and we do have some jumbo tapestry needles mm -hmm. at One Big Happy, you could use those as well. But, so there, I've just woven it through about three different stitches on the back side. And that's it. It looks so good. I just yeah. love it. It's such a fun project. And like I said, it, it brings back so many fond memories for me. And so that is just the sweetest. I, I love that we can kind of come full circle because this is a craft that's been around for a long oh, yeah. time. Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And so to be able to continue that and make it current is just exciting. Yeah. So thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome. Can I tell you one more little secret? Absolutely. All right. So this little bit that we wove in, mm -hmm. I, I leave it so that I know where it is just in case I decide I want to make this bigger. Okay. Oh, you that's just perfect. Unpick it back to where you were. Unpick that last stitch. And then you would just stitch on some more fabric and keep going. Yep. You find your end, stitch on new strips and you can keep going. Brilliant. So let's talk about size that you get from these two methods. So this is the bias tape version, which yes. is where we cut it in half. And this is the full jelly roll, correct? Yes. Okay. And so what does this measure about? This measures about two feet by one and a half feet. Okay. Awesome. So that'd be great for, you know, a little bath mat yep. or anything like that. That's so great. And this, I just keep thinking like a placemat. It's like a placemat oh, size, yeah. but we're not even done with this round. Not nope. even close. No, nope. so. it would be great placemats. And there's notes in the pattern too, about how to change the shape of your finished rug. Oh, um, this one, we were aiming for, for a rug this size. Yeah. Um, but you can shorten that center chain mm. and so you could make a square piece more square yep or you could lengthen it if you've got lots of fabric in your stash and make a runner for the hallway yeah that yeah. would be so fun yeah so fun i love it well thank you so much sarah for being here make sure you guys check out the wonderful videos that she and jenny fish have put together over at one big happy they're so much to learn, so many wonderful projects, and I just really appreciate you coming over <laughs> to spend some time with us here at Missouri Star and sharing your wonderful talents with us. So oh, it's been great to be here. Thanks so Misty. much. Thank you so much. Tell everybody again where they can find you. You can find us at OneBigHappy.com. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.